is the Glass Cannon Network. Oh, hey there, Nash. Welcome to Haunted City. Uh, I'm Jared Logan, and I was just reading through my copy of Blades in the Dark, the game that we play on this show. It's by John Harper and Evil Hat Studios. Buy your copy wherever games are sold. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> right away, I need to clear my throat. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Abu, what Is this what off-putting? <laughs> Where's your book? My book is here. Don't like. Hold up. Wait. Now hold up your book, feel... Abu. Right. Okay. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> has to show their. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster. Is it going great? What if Abu just went offline? <laughs> <laughs> and then this sound Test happened pattern. for some reason. <laughs> what is in the dark? All right, yeah, if you're just listening, everybody was showing up their book, and then Abu knocked over a shelf and broke a window. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, well, right. uh, okay, we all have our books ready, so uh, we're ready to do this thing by the book. Uh, let me introduce my cast. They're here every week. Guys, it's Ross Bryant, Josephine McAdam, and Abu Salim. Hey, guys. What up? What hello, up? hello. Ready to uh, enter Duskfall once again. We are recording Boy. this right after Halloween. How did everybody's <laughs> Halloween go? Oh, man. It was uh, great, you know? Change Hopefully people are listening to this, like, on December 17th, mm -hmm. and we're talking about <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> yeah. But I think yeah. Halloween, you know, it's really it's really appropriate to Duskfall because of the ghosts and the whatnot. So yes. uh, what did everybody do? What kind of spooky, scary stuff did you do, Ross Bryant? Um. Just walked around the neighborhood, mostly scoping for dogs in costumes. I uh, saw some cool hot dogs, saw a little princess, saw a sushi fish. Um, mm. And that's that's really all I needed out of, out of <laughs> What a Halloween crazy season. sentence. Saw a little hot dog, saw a princess, saw a sushi fish. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there was also a house um, with roughly a thousand inflatable ghosts, spooks, and ghouls that we went up to. And even though it was very much for kids, I am so averse to being startled that I was what? a little nervous going up to it. <laughs> wow. I just, Incredible. I love horror movies. I like spooky and eerie things, but I don't like being startled. We've talked about this. Horror movies that are jump scare machines are not my forte. That's right. right. That's right. We all have our very specific yeah. fears. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the show, if I just go, Ross, like, will that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, listen for that. Watch for that, uh, Nash. We're going to do that. Um, and uh, Joe, you told me you kind of did a little uh, a tour of uh, spookily decorated houses, right? Yeah, we went to a neighborhood that has like a little Halloween decorating competition. And so they go like all out, like there are houses that have like, little haunted house sections that people were going through and lining up for. Like, it, it was wild. And we had our, our little pup with us, Jordy LaForge, and he was a... It, I need to get him, really, a Star Trek costume. You need to get him the Jordy LaForge visor. I know, visor. I really need to. Mm -hmm. I really need to. Yeah. But uh, he was dressed up as a sweet devil. That's what it said. It was like a little black hoodie with, like, wings and a little devil tail and then little horns. He was very cute. That sounds adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and Sweet Devil reminds me of like my daughter has like spooky books, but they always make sure to add an adjective to everything yes. so that they'd always be mm. like, look, it's a friendly ghost. Yes. Here are some <laughs> nice bats. Uh, it always makes sure you know that they're not going to you know, bite you or whatever. And then that's what my daughter will always say to me. I'll be like, hey, look at that skeleton. And she's like, it's a nice skeleton. And I'm like, oh. Oh, okay, if you say so. Oh, man. I think it wants to murder us. But okay, if you say it's I, nice. You know, I remember once, I don't even think this was for Halloween, but as a kid, it was, I, there was a book, a, a distinctive book I remember. And it was about two friends who, it was like a pop-up book. You know those books that you mm -hmm. like open mm -hmm. and it pops up? Yeah. And it was about these two friends who were going into this, I don't know whether it was like a haunted city or like a haunted <laughs> little house. Yeah. And it ends with essentially one of the friends 
being turned into like a monster and eating their friend. <laughs> and it was a kid's, it was a kid's book. And I remember, I remember reading it and it, it like the art style as well, terrifying. And I'm like thinking, I, I can't remember. And, they, and I just, and I, now, you know, you're telling me about all these nice skeletons. They weren't nice in this book, man. No, mm-hmm. I don't they think were. so. It was ghoulish. It was horrible. Like, and <laughs> I, yeah, they can't do that nowadays, can they? Are you sure I, that was for kids? I am definitely sure it was for kids. It was a pop-up book. What, yeah. what adult would read a pop-up book? <laughs> there were those awesome, pages they're too. Cool. To awesome this, period. Uh, did, did, when they pop up, do they pop up really fast? No. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I don't like that. <laughs> it depends on how quickly you throw open the book. Um, oh, God. Halloween's not... It's, is it as big in the UK, Abu? It's not quite as big. But Halloween? Right? Not really. Yeah. It's 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 becoming a thing. I remember as, as as a kid growing up, like, it was, it was like, my thing. Like, I really loved Halloween. Um, I think um, it was... Especially because I, I grew up in, like, a cul-de-sac, so... But, you know, we would all go trick or treating around the area. I grew up in the countryside, so not in London. I'm sure it was very different here in London. But yeah, it's not really a thing um, until recently where it's now like you got to have a party and you got to go to like this and dress up like that. And, right. It, it, so, it seemed bigger when we were visiting, you know, because we were just there. Yeah. I saw like Halloween decorate Everywhere, you know like right? and yeah. and stuff being sold in the stores all halloween themed so yeah. i was now i notice a change yes. i know that on halloween you guys in the uk you build a wicker man and you <laughs> burn a policeman inside of it is that correct to ensure a good harvest yeah <laughs> bro i can't say that comfortably especially with the way that i look you understand? <laughs> like if i said that right now <laughs> uh uh, for those of you in the dark, I was just making a reference to the 1970s uh, horror movie, The Wicker Man, starring Christopher Lee. Uh, and if you haven't seen that, you should go see it. It's a great uh, spooky movie. Isn't that what Burning Man's all about? I guess. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, it, it has something to do with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, who, uh, who knows? Got weird, man. Is anybody uh, here Wiccan? Yeah. Anyone here a druid? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, which of you guys? I think one of you is a druid. Is that right? Is anybody into tarot? <laughs> None of it. We we really not. We're not taking the boxes. You know. You. I feel like. I know that you're a enough. devout Christian, Joe. Oh right. You know. You know this about me from that great that hunter game that we played, where I knew nothing about any, like religion whatsoever. Well, that's. A, that, I mean, you knew enough. You knew enough. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm. I'm into. I'm into uh, um, uh, divination and. And uh, esoteric lore. So yeah, I, I, Jared, if you ever want to hang out by a standing stone, um, at the at the equinox, and there we go, do some arcane rituals to make sure that um, the the gods shall smile on you in the year to come. Ross, you gotta, up. you gotta spend more time in Scotland, Ross. <laughs> I, clearly, speaking of arcane <laughs> rituals. A thousand years ago, this was a land of beauty and magic. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the land of the dead. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of factories and tenements surrounded by crackling lightning towers. Outside the city is a wasteland of undead. Inside the city is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades in, in the, the dark. dark. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, people love the intro. People love the intro. I've heard we're getting it on a t-shirt. I've heard oh, we're getting the intro on a t-shirt. I cannot that t-shirt. wait. Hell, That's the word yes. on the street. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. So I hope really it's in the same a- sort of font and layout as those ones that are that are like. In this house, we believe. (laughs) Right. Like the shirt that says, I drink and I know things. Um, (laughs) Um, We really step up. in sarcasm. We got to step up our Foley game on the next ones. Okay. Yeah. Next time I'll give more pauses so you guys can add wild sound effects and Foley to it. Cool. (laughs) Welcome back to Duskfall Scoundrels. Today, we are going to finish up our downtime. Brief recap the crew had to get out of Duskfall after a disastrous score at the Childermass estate. 
<laughs> ring their contact oh, in the path of echoes recommended that they lay low for a while maybe even get out of town so the crew the remnant followed Fitz, a collector who owed them coin all the way to the imperial city where over the course of three episodes they managed to find Fitz. they tried to get their money back in the emperor's cabinet of curiosities unfortunately as the show is wont to do things went sideways uh, and you escaped with uh, one little bit of loot from the Cabinet of Curiosities. And what was that loot, Josephine McAdam? It was an onyx stone necklace with a ruby. Yes. And you've already, I think, uh, uh, you've already sold that. Uh, I believe we covered that in the last Did we do it downtime. at the end of the last? Yes. Oh, yes, because we got our coin. Yep. Yeah, yeah you, so you got your coin from it, and you uh, you paid up to the Path of Echoes, who are Ugh, sort of the, yeah. the, the, the gang that kind of, uh, well, they're not really a gang, the cult or uh, secret society that sort of is your patron. And um, everybody also got XP, <laughs> but we did find out what people had done with that XP. None. So, uh, <clears throat> because some of you, uh, I think, or maybe all of you upgraded in some way. So... Let's start with Juliette Bell Rose. Juliette, uh, I believe, filled her playbook XP, if I'm not mistaken, and was able to take a new special ability. Joe, what have you chosen for Juliette Bell Rose? Okay. She's going to take the veteran ability in order to grab the ability called Trust in Me. It is oh. a slide ability, and it says you get plus one die versus a target with whom you have an intimate relationship. Right, yeah. <laughs> Normally a slide ability. Um, and then we Don't define, look into it too much. <laughs> we, define, we defined what, uh, what a intimate relationship is, but I think that... Um, with this crew and the way that they do RP, that shouldn't be hard to define, okay? Um, let me just make sure, veteran, there's no special requirements to take a veteran ability, right? You can just no, take, you just it. take I it. I don't believe yeah. so, we've done it before, so I think yeah. we've it's checked just, it, yeah. The ability to diversify into another um, mm -hmm. another playbook's uh, special abilities. Great, and it makes your character really customized, you know? Yeah. Because uh, you take other abilities from other playbooks. Uh, great. I can't wait to see how Juliet is going to use that. I mean, she has one intimate paramour in the crew. Or is that person intimate anymore? Well, okay. So how do you define intimate? <laughs> Does well, it have to be? No, it doesn't have to be okay. that intimate. It doesn't have to be like a former longtime lover at all. Um, okay. I think you just need to establish some sort of even over the course of a night or several hours, some sort of relationship that goes deeper than an acquaintance or a business right, right, transaction. Right. 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 Um, so uh, definitely a really cool angle in which to pull a score because this crew does social scores so well. Um, <laughs> throw in a little shade. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Abu, Valkos, I believe, had a new special ability. Is that right? Yeah, yeah he okay. did. Okay, what has Valkos taken? So I was wondering if we could like go into a scene here, um, and you know I've been going to ring a lot and getting my uh, my 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 stress fix from uh, drinking into the into the pool of ghostly ectoplasm, whatever liquids. Yeah, uh, that they uh, perhaps uh, what what they sometimes call. In Dusk Vault, a spirit well. You've been spirit kind well. of sipping from the spirit well. Yeah. So I was hoping to kind of <clears throat> do a bit of both. So I don't know whether I reveal that ability now or I reveal it while we're role playing and I'm getting my stress down. Is that because how I, you'd like to do it? Would I'd you like kind of like to do it that way if that's possible. Absolutely. Uh, and you. I should have I should have offered that to all of our players. Um, although I don't know how. <clears throat> Juliet would have uh, introduced hers uh, on the sly, or like, in, but but uh, but uh, okay, absolutely. Hold it back, hold it back, and bring it out when it's time. Hey. Um, so uh, finally, Ekphelia, formerly Ophelia, formerly Ekapragwodi, 
uh, you got a new ability. I think we may have already talked about it. I'm not, I don't remember exactly, but what, what's your new ability? And then that comes with a new stricture. That's right. We're playing the vampire playbook. <clears throat> the, um, the uh, new ability that I selected is called Sinister Guile, uh, which says that during downtime, you can choose one of these options. You get a free additional downtime activity, or you can take plus one uh, die to all downtime activity rolls. So you wow. either add one That's or you crazy. add a dice to the ones you take. Um, Andy, if you've got projects and irons in the fire. Um, yes. <laughs> But Holy shit. These sorts of powers come at a price for the the old vampire. And uh, one of the things I love about this playbook is that it that it's balanced with these strictures. Um, I, I think we mentioned that that uh, Aphelia already has one of these bound. The spirit must remain in this body or be destroyed. Um, which which interestingly implies that without this, the spirit could escape its shell. And animate another body and stay alive. Um, if you didn't yeah. have this stricture, mm. um, but Aphelia Not the case is for Aphelia. kept. And I think we're we're saying that maybe there's there may be some spark of Ekaprag still in there, like hanging on, keeping <laughs> keeping uh, Ophelia from from getting yeah. out. I mean, um, it might even be the crew's decision. Or it might have been the crew's decision to separate them at some point because they felt that you know it's it's gotten out of hand, but. Now they can't do that with it without destroying Ophelia. Very right. Jeez. Do we mm-hmm. know that? No, you I, probably I think, don't. Although I you can. I think I mentioned just kind of in a or Ophelia mentioned that like that they can't be um, said okay, that. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Although. Okay, okay. But now I have to because I took a new advantage. I now have to take another one of those uh, oh, weaknesses. Wow. Um, do you want to hear what they are? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. Okay, mm-hmm. so the, the um, so it's either slumber. In downtime, you must spend one activity resting in a dark, silent place, or else <laughs> suffer three stress. <laughs> oh so you got to use one of those God. precious downtimes to sleep. <laughs> uh, or forbidden, you cannot enter a private residence without permission from the owner. Oh, classic! <laughs> you gotta classic. let the right Life. one in. Such a classic. Um. Repelled. A spirit bane charm can hold you at bay, where you take two stress to resist the repulsion. So a spirit oh. bane charm comes out and you go full Christopher Lee, like. <laughs> um, uh, and finally, be steel. When you suffer physical harm or overindulge your vice, your body twists into a horrific bestial form. And so you next feed without overindulging. Oh boy. Oh, these are fun. What are They're you taking? Great. What are you getting? Oh so I got to pick one of those. And um, I'm going to pick it in secret, and you'll just find out what it is when it comes into play. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I okay, love great. It. Oh, that's so fantastic. Oh, all these secrets is great. That's great. Um, all right. Uh, so we've handled, I think, all of the advancements for our crew. Um, now we're going to talk about heat. Now, people did die. Oh, we didn't do heat last time? <laughs> I don't think we did heat. Mm. So people did die in the score, but on the other hand, you guys have Crow's Veil, which means you don't take additional heat for people dying. So beyond that, I think because you were kind of out of town, you were kind of unknowns, and you handled a lot of the little um, stumbling blocks and hurdles that came your way, you handled them pretty deftly. I'm only going to give you two heat, which is standard exposure. Wait, we're wanted? Oh, yeah. yeah, you you have one level of wanted. You have one level of wanted. Um, so, and that happened a while ago. Uh, okay, yeah, so well back. Two, wow. two, two heat, uh, leaving you with three more it. heat. Three more heat until you take another wanted level. Oh. I'm amazed that you're surprised by the fact that we are wanted. I am. <laughs> have well, you been I'm, in any of the schools no, that we've done? I, I have. Yeah. I've tried very difficult to negotiate, like just one away from wanted. Basically, I don't remember. Um, it was probably, how do, probably the one you know where we had to break into the to the house and the guy who was a spirit capturer of sorts. Probably, but yeah, I don't, yeah, how Flint. do we get rid of wanted Flint. levels? <clears throat> well, you, oh, yeah, you, uh, you, you, getting rid of wanted levels is only done by sending crew members to prison. Oh, shit. 
Uh, and then there point. are claims you can take in prison, and we can deal with the whole incarceration system. I think we should run towards that as quickly as we can. Uh, <laughs> but if you want, you could, uh, y- you know, use a downtime activity to reduce your heat because it's it's getting kind of high mm-hmm. now. It's uh, it's getting kind of high. Let's let's talk about the entire crew sheet. Let's take a close look at it because yes. some of the stuff on it is sort of important. You guys are tier one strong. Yeah. Before the end of the season, I think it would be possible for you get to get to tier two. <laughs> but maybe that won't happen. But I think that it's possible. Right now, your rep, you have, um, you need one, two, three, four, five more rep, I think, in order to, um, well, in order to upgrade. Is uh, that a misclick or do we have turf? You have one turf, right? Yeah. yeah, you have one mm-hmm. turf. We do. Okay, so, so let's add. Let's add one more. You're right. Uh, so uh, thank you. That may have been a misclick. Um, so uh, you yeah. need four more uh, rep in order to upgrade. Definitely doable with like uh, another score or two. <clears throat> and uh, that, then you would need sixteen coin to go to tier two. Oh, and right hard, now man. you have in six. your in your hideout in your vaults you have six. So uh, that is the situation there. Okay. Um, so that's all of that. I think now it would be a good time to go ahead and move on. You just keep all of that in mind. Maybe you want to pick a a score that will give you mm-hmm. some more turf, you know, yeah, right, uh, right. making it easier to upgrade in a minute. Or maybe you want to go f- for the score that's going to give you the most coin because you're, you're probably short quite a few coin uh, f- I- short of 16. I think we really ought to be investing in some of these other yeah. layer things, that, especially the one that give extra coin for yeah. jobs. Like, I think yeah. that would be, I think we should try and get one of those. That's, yep, that's probably a good <clears throat> idea. Um, mm-hmm. Just going to so, put that out there. Okay. That's right. a good no. idea. Okay, so that's just the things to think about on the cruise sheet. Now it is time for entanglements. Oh, sh- entanglements. <laughs> So we're going to find out if there's any fallout when you get back to Duskfall uh, surrounding you, any kind of uh, epilogue to your score. And um, I would love for one of you to roll it. Why don't we have Joe? Do you want to roll it? Okay. Oh, oh, All God. right. Yes, I'll roll it. I'll right. This is just a fortune roll. So it's just a, just a, a, a let's see. Um, you roll your tier, which is one. So you just roll one die. Okay, I think there's a roll for fortune button, so I assume that that's going to work. The, that's the button in roll 20. Okay. Hit that beautiful fortune button. It's... It, oh, it rolled two... Oh, it says zero dice. Is that right? It should and be so, one die. Okay, well, let me just pick a one dot ability and roll that. Yeah, that, that works. Whatever works. It's a three. A three in the middle. Yeah. A three. Okay. Ish. So I have to choose which of these uh, happens, and I think I have the one that I like. So, uh, as we return to Duskfall, um, uh, Valkos, um, you're probably talking to one of your contacts, uh, but it, you're not talking to Sawtooth, because through this uh, friend you learn that Sawtooth is being very loud and uncouth in his inquiries about oh. vampires. If you recall, you told Sawtooth to go ask around about vampires. Sawtooth <laughs> is not being very covert in his investigations, and uh, he is maybe drawing the wrong kind of attention. Oh, so no. you need to forfeit to rep or make an example of Sawtooth or risk the unwanted attention, right? Uh, And if you want, you can confront Sawtooth and find out what he has to say about it. Um, What does the unwanted attention mechanically translate to? It means that you guys may develop eventually a negative status with an organization, okay. or it means that uh, this organization might seek a reprisal against you of some sort. Right. Someone okay. doesn't like Sawtooth looking into this, and they will make sure that you stop investigating the very concept of vampires. I'm going to go and confront 
Sawtooth. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Valkos, come in, come in. <laughs> mm. I've got good news. <laughs> Enlighten me. I'm getting very close, very, very close to finding out something about the uh, the little uh, inquiry you're having me make. Yes. So See, I've heard. What do you mean you've heard? <laughs> oh well. He's picking his nose. I mean, and I'm slowly getting closer. I'm like, well, everyone's heard about the inquiry. But what lurks in the shadows is not very secretive now, is it? You see, well, Sawtooth, I- you keep talking and asking questions to everyone. <laughs> That's not the way to find out information now, is it? Uh, and I well, kind of hold his little finger that he's picking his nose with. <laughs> okay, let me just explain, okay? Because mm. I'm close. I'm close to figuring out what you need me to f- what you need me to figure out. Yeah, okay. well. Go on, enlighten me. And okay, it better be well. worth it, or this finger. Mm. Carry yes, on. I, no, I need the finger, so just listen. So, okay. The spirit wardens. I think they know about vampires in the city. And I think they'll they'll have the best information about them. So what I've done, and I, I think it's going well actually, is I've offered my services to the wardens. I've applied to uh, help deal with corpses. Uh, you know, I have some experience, you know, sometimes, well, sometimes, you know, my work with a patient doesn't go very well. So I have uh, <coughs> um, experience dealing with uh, with bodies. Uh, now, of course, the spirit wardens, they, they, they burn all the bodies, but sometimes they need someone to cut them open, look them over before they throw them into the, uh, the furnace. So if I can get into Bellwether Crematorium, I can get access to their archive and I can find out if they know about the you know the weaknesses of uh, vampires, or if they know which vampires exist in the city, can you let go of my finger now? I kind of let go, and I'm like, listen, Sawtooth, you are a good man. I have no doubt about it. However, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're making too much noise. Right, 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 right. You need to be a bit more discreet. You see. I you can do the, that. I can do that. Yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. But you need to show me. In fact, here, let me teach you something. Something really, it's a beautiful lesson. You see, the beauty of being discreet is that you can get up close and personal, find out as much as you want to find out. Yeah. And without anyone suspecting or knowing, and I'm going to grab his head and just slam it on the table. <laughs> ah! Ow! Ah! You see, they Shit! won't suspect. <laughs> The fuck fact me. that you are trying to fuck them. Ah, oh, that <laughs> goddamn nose! So, please, sort to. Ow! For the sake of your nose Ow. and your finger, <laughs> continue doing the work that you're doing. Hey, hey, don't cry. And I kind of pick up his head and I stroke it. I'm like, don't cry, don't cry, please. Don't cry. It's so unbecoming. Keep doing what you're doing. I believe in you. I give him a nice, like, pat on the cheek. I love you, Sawtooth. I love you too. <laughs> Good. But please, stop fucking up. I, I, I'll be, mum's the word. I, I won't say another word to anybody. But are Good. you saying that you want me to continue trying to infiltrate the crematorium? Or are you going to make an example of me? Or are you going to forfeit <laughs> two rep? <laughs> I am going to have to make an example of you. Uh, How do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. So, um, I, I think that you've established that you're real. You really hurt him. I think you maybe mess. Well, you messed him up right now. His nose is bleeding. 
You just, you could, you could pass along word that you've told him to shut up about these things. You could uh, really mess him up right now, like continue to brutalize him. Uh, and then I think word would get out uh, that he's been made an example of. You could, um, you could come up with a third thing that is your own idea. Uh, could I? Um, but you're basically telling him to stop his so investigation I, so yes. if you do this. So, okay. Could I then essentially... Could I do this? Could I tell him to come... Like, I, I could say this. I say either... Either I take your arms or I destroy your shop. You can continue your practices, obviously, in the grotto. But you see, something has to be done, Sawtooth. I guess if that's the choice, that I guess... Sh could we, like, maybe do a finger? Because that feels, like, fair to me. And, uh, you your know, arms. I need my shop. <laughs> or your shop. Arms! You know, I feel like the nose should count for something because, um... <laughs> That, like, could we kind of prorate it based on the fact that the nose is already a shambles? Fine. Then maybe I take one of your eyes. Or the shop. Eye. Okay, an eye. Let's do the shop. Let's do Let's do the shop. Great. Okay. <laughs> but please, take whatever you want and take it to the grotto. You can continue your services with us, obviously. Okay, um, I just need a couple things here. Just... Uh, and he just starts packing very slowly, like, supplies into a, a little doctor's bag. What the fuck? Listen, I've got to make an example of this guy, and I don't want to be breaking him in, in public or say, look, I just dealt with sorted. So I thought if I destroy his shop, but he can still continue his practices in our place, we still got some physical out there, right? I, that, I, I think that was a great solution as your GM. But what it, Joe, what were you going to say? I was say, remember, I have the physical ability as well. Oh, right. Yeah, Satu's more of like an agent or, you know. Because uh, he's like, he's pretty low tier right now. Shit. He's your tier. You're, yeah, he's you're, a, he, uh, we're your low friends, tier. Your friends he's upgrade with you. Yeah, he's not any higher than but, us. But you get, but we get bonus, like healing with you, right? Yeah, but I can also do it. I can okay. tinker with bones, bloods, and bodily humors to treat wounds or stabilize the dying. Oh, crap. Everyone in my crew gets plus one D to their healing treatment rolls. I kind of like Sawtooth, man. No, of I'm course. Gonna, no, um, keep keep so, Sawtooth around. I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna invite him to our grotto. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking so Mark, we're gonna yeah. live with this this <laughs> man. He's been in the, been in the grotto. Oh, but now he's gonna. St well, he, he can't even stay there. So who knows where he's gonna stay? Okay, because uh, the grotto can only support so many crew members. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, so um, uh, you destroy Sawtooth's shop and yep. um. Word definitely gets out that you have done that. And uh, the investigation into vampires by Sawtooth stops because he was being too loud and um, not careful about it. And that covers your entanglements. Well done, oh Valkus. Jesus, that was... I was thinking of maybe taking his teeth, but then I thought, nah, that's just going to cause too much problems. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, he's he he's, seems happy to have his shop destroyed instead of his body. So, um, and he he wants to keep his eyes. So, okay. um, you uh, may all now move to downtime activities, or you can simply set up other scenes, free play that you think that you might want to set up. <laughs> if there's something you've been uh, thinking that your character would do now that they're back in Duskfall. Um, Why don't we, we start like, with... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, can we go over like how everyone's looking after the hell of a score we just did? That's a great idea. Like, so you're, all, you're all sitting in the grotto and getting a measure of each other. And uh, I think what you're talking about Juliet is stress mainly. Yeah, right? and ha and or harm. I want. You know, I'm curious where everyone's at. Juliet is still weeping. That oh, is yeah. my level one heart. She's just ever weeping right now. Yeah, I know. I think it doesn't have to be full on bawling all the no, time. No, no, but no. I think but just your <laughs> mascara or whatever is constantly smeared by tears coming down your face. Constant. And it would stream. it would hurt you in a social situation. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm one stress away from trauma for yeah, 
on that side of things. How's oh. Valkos doing? Yeah, I'm one stress away from a, another trauma, which is not good. You didn't take any harm? No, I've I've, oh. I've got I've got one one bruised and panicked. So I need oh, to sort oh. those up. I need to sort those out. So uh, as you do, uh, yeah. So it's great. Yeah, you're 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 taking um, you're taking. I think it's less effect. Maybe it's oh, uh, is that is that what? It, so mm-hmm. even if you have just one, it doesn't. It has to be. Oh crap! No, really? No, no, no. Well, it's what it applies to. Right. right. So not like a, a broken arm wouldn't apply to a mental okay. challenge or a social challenge. Okay. Whereas uh, Juliet's weeping will not stop her from running, climbing, okay, tinkering, cool. but it would okay. stop her from impressing somebody at a party. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I see. Oh, but you have a level two that gives you negative one die in panicked. I think that so that would that hurt you. Then? I think uh, panicked would hurt you for mental activities and okay. probably hurt you in a social activity. So it's hurting you two ways. Okay. I think panic so would I've apply. To, right. And bruise gives you less effect with like physical things because you're you're bruised up. I'm you're hurt. hurting. Yeah. You definitely okay. need to to probably get some recovery before yeah, Valkos goes the, out I think again. That's, that's the plan. I'm gonna yeah. Downtown activities are gonna mm-hmm. be spent basically. <laughs> what about Ekphelia? How is Ekphelia doing? So I think probably when, when the journey started, when, when Ophelia and the crew were going out on the train towards the Imperial City, um, it just looked like Ekaprag Wodi, um, uh, fit and lithe as ever, so maybe with a little patina of stage makeup on. <laughs> now, with being one stress away from what happens to them when they get full stressed out. Um, as perhaps in the grotto is that makeup is peeling, like, uh, Ekphelia looks sunken. The eyes, like, recess. Um, like, desiccated <sighs> veins run up the neck and over the skull. The hair hangs lank. Um, and, uh, Perhaps more than ever, um, this looks like an animated corpse. Um, oh, she's never looked more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanically, where does uh, they? Where do they stand? One stress away from full max out, and uh, but no harm because they okay. fed on Primo. Right. Right. I remember. Okay, so that's where everybody stands. You can begin uh, downtime activities, or you could take another scene. Um, and why don't we start with Juliet? Because you were the one that okay. wanted to get the kind of uh, lay of the land there. I just, I just wanted to get a vibe, you know, check on the crew. Um, I su- Okay, so this is interesting. I, I'm going to indulge your vice because I need to get my stress down. Indulge my vice. Yeah, my and it, yours vice, is obligation, right? Right, obligation to my deceased partner. <laughs> um, Interesting. You know what? We're gonna it's, we're gonna throw it back. She's already weeping from this from this uh, harm that she took on. Um, I, she's gonna go visit the shrine that she made for Ophelia. That's in the park. But this is interesting. Ophelia is back in her life. I know. So she's going to mourn someone who is uh, animated and living with her? I think she's going to... Yes. Yes, she is going to mourn the loss of Ophelia in a very different way because she's realized that her... The Ophelia that she once knew and loved is not with her and we've Understood. never really gotten into the like the pre-lapse character of Ophelia mm-hmm. what was I'm, an, I'm curious like <laughs> almost flashback style what was like the relationship <laughs> like because they were both spark rights mm-hmm. I mean clearly Ophelia is like incredibly like driven and severe yes. but I think probably in life that was like 
like a, a passion for knowledge and yes, and, um, they would get like lost in their work together. But mm-hmm. honestly, I think that it was um, Ophelia that would keep Juliet on the straight and narrow path, like by the books, because Juliet would want to experiment and try all these different things and maybe go a little wild with the ideas and. Ophelia would bring her back out of that and sort of bring her back and be like, hey, it's, you know, like, and and would actually be like, let's go home, let's take a break, let's, let's unplug from all of these things. And, and Mm. I think was the softer side to Juliet's like wilder, more crazed, like ambition. Mm. And it seems to have flipped. Okay. I think the best thing to do (laughs) is as you kneel at this shrine, you have a memory you have Ooh. a memory of something that happened between you and the old Ophelia. Oh Ophelia my. as you knew her. And um, after you have that memory, after Aww. you describe that memory, and it can be as elaborate or as simple as you like, after you've described that memory, we will roll to see if you can, okay. how much stress you can get rid of. Okay. Uh, let's have it be at the Sparkwrights lab, like working one late evening on what they had been researching before all of this went down. I think they'd been <clears throat> they'd been working on a alternate fuel source to electroplasm, basically. Yes, so I'm imagining some sort of mm-hmm. Victorian looking turbine in front yes. of you on like a big uh, metal table, a lot yes. of cables running out of it. Um, perhaps there's even an exhaust port where there's like, you know, like smoke comes out of it. Um, uh, it looks like a, just a big engine, an enormous cylindrical engine. And, uh, both of you are tinkering with it. Yes. And, um, messy hair, soot, you know, all over and just like, would you like to take the role of Ophelia, Mr. Bryant? Sure. And like, and, and maybe Ophelia is like kind of almost the opposite, like like tied back in a very mm-hmm. like 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 tight bun, like yeah. goggles, very a little bit more. If if uh, if Juliet is kind of the mad scientist, <laughs> with uh, um, um, Ophelia is like a little bit more buttoned down. And um, we've done it, we've done it, we've t- it works. It works, Ophelia. Look, 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 look! It starts wildly grabbing the and 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 pouring a mixture in here and like it. It sustains. It sustains the 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 electroplasm that the tower. Look at it. And there's like an arc that goes between two like sort of miniature rods that they've constructed. Of course, it doesn't use electroplasm at all. That is right. what is miraculous <clears throat> about it. Um, and it's like, this, this is revolutionary. Yes. Just, just, just think of it. Juliet, to live in a world with no more refineries, belching their, their, <laughs> their smoke over our city. The, the, the Leviathan hunters no more putting their lives at risk, plying the waters. Why, some of the gloom, some of the gloom might, might, might dispel over our city and some, some of the shards of the sun might shine on us once more because of you. Because of us, my dear, I could not have done this without you. Oh, come on, you're, there, there is something untamed in your mind that, 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 that I could have never. Stop it. I've never had direction before I had you, you know this. Oh. You must be the one to bring it to them. I want you to tell them. You know, I will go. I just I go on and on and on, and I cannot gather my thoughts. But show them. I I want it to be you. It feels. It feels wrong to be the mouthpiece for your brilliance, but I'm. Um, Stop this! You are too modest. You help me every step of the way. And yes, I, I, I will. Love- I'll go to the board. I'll go to, I'll go to Miss Pharaohs personally. Cut to. You're in front of the board. <laughs> Una Pharaohs. And, and so a, you see, uh, there, there, there is a way with the correct refinements. Now these are alchemical, mind you. 
only having to do with, with proper alchemical reactions. There is nothing eldritch. There is nothing... There is nothing spiritually potent about these mixtures. Um, my, my partner would be able to... Would be able to describe this in, in the most minute detail, but, but, but here you will find the broad strokes of a revolution. Yes. Yes, thank you. We've reviewed your notes, and we feel that further testing is necessary. I, I, I think if you turn to, to, to page six of your deck, you will see that the, that the testing has already been undertaken. I believe a large scale uh, model should I'm be put into production with immediately. Your schematics. We all are. We're familiar with the schematics, and we will uh, continue to test this model. Uh, and, uh, you know, in. Um, but surely we will be on the team that, that, that oversees the testing. I'm afraid at this point, it's time for you to make a departure. Yes. Juliette Belrose has poured her her life, her soul, her, her spirit into what, what is before you. Did she, she needs to be on this team in an advisory capacity. Yes, pouring her heart into it uh, is a very commendable. But right now what is needed is a clear vision and a level head. And then perhaps that, that is where my partnership may, may come into play. It's time to pass this up the ladder. Thank you, Ophelia. We're done. What? Like, there are like five scientists, Sparkwrights, the heads of the guild, kind of all sitting behind this uh, huge table, staring at you and waiting patiently. For and you to and as I step out, I, before I go, like, um, if the people knew, if the people of Duskwall knew that an alternative was available, then I should think that they would want to know that the inventor for whom this was their brainchild was involved. And I only hope that the people in this room don't don't seek to, to stonewall and to something that could be a revolution that, that will yes. be to the benefit of every citizen of our city and, and indeed our empire. Yes. Okay. Your comments are noted. And I, I will remind you as you leave this room that your discretion and secrecy is paramount to the ongoing completion of this project. Yes, I understand. Good day. Now let's return to the present. Um, I think Ophelia told you all about that. Of course. And uh, you are uh, weeping at her shrine. And uh, would you like to try to relieve some stress by doing that? Yes. And, that was uh, heartbreaking. I know. Jesus. I know. I'm like, I think I'll, there's just a... Ophelia, I wish you were still here in the way that I remember you to be. I wish I had your guidance in what to do next and how to address with whatever has been unfolding within my world right now. But I know I must overcome that and use your memory to guide me instead. All right, so we're going to use our uh, weakest attribute, which I think you have a one in both prowess and resolve, and we're mm -hmm. going to roll it, and that's how much stress we are going to relieve. I'm going to do resolve. Mm. 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 How, how'd you do? I rolled a four. That's not bad. I'll, I like that. Not bad. Not bad at all. So uh, go ahead and uh, relieve four stress. Okay. Okay. Nicely done. Okay, and now you only have four stress pending. You still have four stress. Yes. Now, um, <clears throat> you were saying that you miss Juliet. I mean, I'm sorry, that you yes. miss Ophelia. Mm -hmm. That uh, you wish that she were here. I would like to ask the player of Ophelia how closely they've been keeping tabs on Juliet. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yes, of course. And uh, 
perhaps like uh, as that like sweet and heartfelt um, prayer goes up at that shrine, um, a pair of eyes that glint with an unearthly luster kind of watch from a shadow. Fuck. Let's follow those eyes. What is the um, first downtime activity or scene? So fucked up. Um, you're mourning someone who's right here, mm-hmm. right over oh, in the shadows. Um, Ekphelia, what would your uh, scene that you'd like to set be? And it can be to complete one of your three downtime activities, one of your possible three downtime yeah. activities. So I'm going to now. We just had that resolution of stress with the rolling of your weakest attribute. Now, <clears throat> as a vampire, it looks like you use a downtime activity to hunt prey and indulge your vice, which is feeding. Um, and when you feed, uh, you can... Great. So um, I need to hunt to indulge my vice. And that, that would mean the skill of hunting, I think. The action, the action rating. Yeah. I actually think, uh, uh, and I, I could be wrong. I think you can use any action you'd like. Okay, great. Um, um, and um, but uh, if you succeed, how much stress does that relieve? That is the question. Um, let me let me look here. Um, that's how you I? indulge your vice. So I guess maybe then you once you hunt, do you then roll? The weakest attribute. Use one downtime activity to hunt. Oh, you're right. The wor- word hunt is bolded. It seems like that is the mm. action. And indulge you- your vice. Oh, okay. I think I get it now. You're going to roll hunt, and that's how much stress you're going to relieve. Okay. Do we know what happened? Do you know what happens when you, f- when you feed? I mean, we know that someone died, but that's you've thing. fed it d- more than once, right? You don't right. have It doesn't clarify that they die when you feed. I think I, think I can feed without killing, but I... I fed to the point of killing last time, but there's nothing in the rules that clarifies what the what the um, what that entails. But it, it just does say that that's the only way you can heal, and how, it just asks how do you feed and what telltale sign do you leave on your victims? The telltale sign that Ophelia leaves is a blissed out uh, um, um, smile of ecstasy, um, and. Uh, I think that Ophelia is so stressed that Hunt is probably more apt. This is less um, sway, cajole. This is more animalistic. Well, I think after reading the description, I think it, you were correct originally. It must be Hunt. Mm-hmm. So tell me what kind of prey you're going to hunt. <laughs> um, I... Uh, yeah, let's follow those eyes in a park, watching um, Juliette Belrose in solemn prayer, and uh, then just recede back into shadow. Okay, Jesus. Who else? Who else is in this park? Who else is in this park? Um, just been here clutching my pearls, like, oh my god. <laughs> no, I think this is fully a like like a hunt. If there's if there's little gnarled plants in this park, um, hedgerows and uh, pond, and and stagnant ponds, Ophelia will go loping through them well, until a is, solitary figure is found. This is the park where like lovers come to mourn or whatever, right? Yeah. Or, so maybe there's or, another. Is it where right. lovers come to meet up? I forget. There's something specific about this park. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. Um, Mist Shore Park. This dark and overgrown space overlooks the eastern branch of the River Dosk and the Deathlands beyond. In old folk ballads, young lovers who could not be together would commit suicide in this park. Whatever Jeez. the truth of it, the park is certainly haunted now. Yeah, let's find so, let's find some woebegone. Um, let me make a fortune roll because I want to find out who is here. Right. And I have an idea. Okay, so I rolled a six, which was the uh, result on which I was going to say, you come across a young man and a young woman standing on the shore of the river Dosk, and each of them have just pulled a long, glittering knife. 
from their jacket and they are embracing with the knife to each other's throat. What the <laughs> fuck, man? And we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. <laughs> And so we return to Mist Shore Park, where two lovers hold blades to each other's throat. The woman is young. I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sorry. I'm like, what, what? What is this method of suicide? <laughs> <laughs> this is the. W- this is like out of Ow. out of like uh, what out of the this? most <laughs> camp of opera. I'm loving it. This is. Um, they're whispering something to each other. It seems very intense. The woman is young. She is wearing uh, a bustle and, uh, you know, a big, beautiful ga- gown. Uh, uh, not gown, a dress that you would uh, wear for uh, a stroll in the park. The man is dressed uh, well, uh, too. He has like a, a bow tie and a vest uh, and a gold watch on a chain. They look like a young couple out for uh, a happy stroll through this haunted park, but they have blades uh, to each other's throat, and you can see that something very intense is happening. They they have uh, hidden themselves away in sort of a, a isolated glade, isolated grove here in the park. Ekphelia, as you approach, shall I shall I roll my hunt? Yes. How are you going to do this? I just want to know how what you're going to do. Are you going to? Wait for them to do the deed, or are you going to leap upon them now, or what are you going to do? I almost want to see how well the what the dice roll is, and Very then good. figure it out. That sounds right. Um, and so you have a lot of stress. I think you're one away from uh, an additional trauma, which you don't want. I don't need that. So I'm going to uh, this is I'm going to take one of those extra die from my sinister guile. So I will I will not be taking an extra downtime activity, but I'll be adding these dice rolls to the two that I get. Okay, great. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh no. Oh. Shit. Oh. I rolled a two and a one. Oh, my. Oh. So that means, uh, well, wait, you, you your hunt is was higher than that, right? Wasn't your hunt uh, uh, just a one? Uh, yes. Sorry. So your hunt is one. Forgive me, Ross. Your hunt is one. Why did you roll two dice? Because I added my bonus dice from my special Sinister Guile ability. Ah, so instead of getting three <laughs> downtime activities, you're adding a die. Very Sorry. good. Sorry. I understand now. Um, And you said it out loud before, mm-hmm. but I didn't listen. Okay. Uh, and unfortunately, you a two the, my, and a one. The highest roll is a two. So, um, so here's what happens. I think. I think that you leap upon them before they're finished, and you get into an altercation with them, and they are slashing at you with knives and screaming. And you only, well, how much do you think you managed to get here? Well, I guess in this case, I, it would be the highest of these two hunt rolls, right? Kind of the same way. Yeah, as you, it, get you get two. You get two. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, <sighs> they're like kind of uh, hacking and slashing. Um, she's screaming and she's coming down on you with the knife over and over, and he's like standing what? back, like get get back, get back. Um, suddenly they've decided they want to live. Yeah. Um, he's. Or perhaps they were never going to go through the act at all. You can't know that now Mm -hmm. because you're in the middle of a tight spot. Right. Uh, So I think how this works then would be uh, if if the woman is coming at me. um, It's like you don't even know where you stand with the gift of life. And uh, like I think I just try to take. If, if that guy is coming in to jab at me, just like try to redirect his blade into her. Um, and so as she's going down, like. <laughs> I wish I could see this. No matter no matter what, you're only going to relieve two Exactly. Stress. I'm just like, how, how does this get screwed up? Like one of them's but di- dying. Like I still want an action roll to see how this maneuver you just described goes. Oh, okay. Great. Um, this right. is just this is just for color. It's not, you know, I'm not you're not gonna take harm here. This is a downtime Ooh. activity. 
Uh, but I would like to okay. see oh, how it goes. My what finale. action are you going to use Finesse to to to, ju- to Aikido this blade? And I rolled a six. Yeah, there's the roll you wanted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he stabs into her breast. Hot blood gushes out, geysers out, and hits you in the face, Ophelia. <laughs> uh-huh. You see a look of horror on his face. Isn't her this eyes what go you wide. Wanted? Isn't this what you wanted? Are you so prodigal with the gift of life that you would throw it away so easily? There are some of us who have crossed oceans to hold on to it. And I kiss him to to suck him dry. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Because you, uh, you pull away life force breath from people. Mm -hmm. Um, very good. Um, so, um, he uh he actually I'm gonna rule that he uh screams, No, not like this, and he pushes you off of him. He's a strong young man, yeah. and you are left with the dying embers of her life force. Ooh. And that is why you relieve two stress. So yeah, if if perhaps someone someone's caught a glimpse of an eye, they might only they might think for a second that they saw like a just some feral animal covered with blood, like hunched over this um Bleeding a uh, young woman just looking up like, <gasps> with, uh, like would you say you're bestial? I would say that it's somewhat bestial. Yeah, <laughs> bestial. <laughs> How do you pronounce that word? Bestial, bestial. Be- you okay. say bestial, I, I say, say bestial. 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 Let's call Hold the whole, whole thing, thing off. Um, <laughs> understood, understood. God. Uh, uh so yes, um, just two. Somebody's going to have to go hunting again. <laughs> yeah, it oh, sounds man. like. Uh, you hear screaming off in the woods, sobbing, not like this. And I dash away into the shadows. And let's meet Valkos in the grotto. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you like to do? <laughs> what would you like to do? You can take a downtime activity or you can go set a scene, talk to somebody. I think I am going to go take, uh, I'm going to relieve some stress at, at the good old place with Ring. Um, yes. But before I do, actually, yeah, no, I'm going to do that first. So let's do that. So let's do that. So I'm I'm going to go see the, to the Path of Echoes and I'm going to, I remember the last time I was there, it didn't end very well. Um, right. In a room and uh, it didn't go very well and I want to try again. You find yourself back in that room. I'm staring at the locket and all the, you know, the little compartment as to where this Yes, they open is. the little compartment in the wall. This is yeah. a strange test that they've been giving Valkos mm. to see if he can move farther down the path of Echoes. And I think I'm going to do it. It looks um, like an interrogation room. The, the uh, attendant brings the small wooden box to you and places it in front of you. You're seated in an uncomfortable wooden chair. They place the small... It looks like a cigar box. It's very unadorned, uh, kind of beaten up looking. They place it in front of you, and then the attendant leaves the room, and you hear the door lock. My hand sort of hovers over the box and then kind of comes back. It's It's that... There is a bit of fear here, a bit of panic. And essentially, I then put my hand over the box and I open it. Let's get your roll before we find out exactly what happens. Oh, shit. Okay. It's going to be insight. <clears throat> so, because it's uh, my weakest space and die. Okay. Uh, Oh, beautiful. I got a six. Yeah. A six. <laughs> yes. God, oh, man. So, uh, with oh, a six. Oh, man. No, but what does this mean? It means, well, it, first of all, it means you relieve six stress. Mm. But what it also means is um, you have a memory again. I believe last time it was your father, was it not? Mm-hmm. It was. Yes. Um, and um, I, I believe that he was telling you that he... That he is ashamed of you. His uncle he was ashamed so, of me. Yeah, God. it was like kind of like a fathery uncle, like a like a like a it was father your figure. uncle. Thank you, yes. fathery uncle. Father, yeah. Yeah. Fathery yeah. uncle. Fathery <laughs> uncle. Yes, uh, and he is uh, Severosi, of course. So mm-hmm. once again, he says, "Falcos, you pervert! You've brought shame on us." 
Everyone knows your sin. And he's in front of me, yeah? Yes. Big, looming over you, actually. He, he's taller than Valkos, and Valkos is a big guy. Covered in tattoos like Valkos, but he is uh he's in a uh, traditional Severosi garb, so you know, furs and like uh you know uh nothing metal, just like you know, bones. Uh and, and I feel this at first like this wave of panic hits me, but then suddenly it clicks. And I kind of stand slowly, kind of looking up. And my eyes fall onto his chest. And as I kind of reach out, my hand enters into his chest. And into his heart as I grab it. Degenerate pig! And I kind of pull it and then crush it in my hands. And, um... The, the image of your uncle shrivels and deflates like a balloon you let the air out of uh, and you see as it uh, transforms from a strapping muscular man into like a desiccated like mummy and then even that begins to fold in on itself and melt until it um, kind of forms this sort of flower made of dead flesh in front of you. It is like a, a flower, a blooming petals of flesh and bone opening in front of you. And as that flower opens, there is a light inside of it, a blue eerie light inside of it. And I kind of lean down and sort of don't even, I, I like don't even touch the flower. I kind of smell it and ingest it. And as I kind of feel it, go in, this is where you see my hands begin to glow and my tattoos also begin to glow as the ability that I have is the ghost fighter ability. (laughs) And I may imbue my hands or melee weapons or tools with spirit energy and gain potency in combat versus (gasps) the supernatural. I can grapple with spirits to restrain or capture them. Amazing. And uh, oh my God. as your hands are glowing so and at your eyes as well, like there's a bright shining light coming from your eyes and suddenly the box clicks shut and standing in front of you is Ring. Well done, Valkos. I believe this little test is over. Ring walks the box back to the little hole in the wall, puts it back on the little shelf, shuts the wall, turns to you and says you're ready to walk farther down the path yes yes I am ready Valkos I'd like to bring a concern to you please now that we know that you're someone we can trust and thank you by the way for making yourself scarce for a while. Hmm. The Spark Rats. Are you familiar with their new facility? I can be. There is a new facility in Coleridge. They, um, they've developed some new form of technology. Our business here, our holy crusade, is to dig deep into the foundations of this city. Let loose the spirits that dwell there in the core of this city, deep in its ghost field, and absorb the spirits of the ancients to learn what it was like when the sun shined on this place and to unlock their power. Unfortunately, this new facility and the technology located therein threaten our holy mission. This new weaponry that the Spark Rites have developed, well, it could destroy the very spirits we seek to protect. 
Could you do something about that? Could you and your remnant look into this for us? It will be done. If you're able to remove the threat of this new technology, this entire facility from the city, we'd be able to increase the generous funding that we have at times given to certain agents of our mission. Six coin. Eight. And we'll make sure that this whole place is completely destroyed. <laughs> so man. So man. Always. Valkos, I thought you were a true believer. I do I believe. offer you I offer you a benefit that I am not required to offer. And you ask for more. I promise you, not only the destruction and disappearance of this facility, but my absolute service and loyalty to you, to the path of Echoes. How about this, Falcos? Eight coin and your pledge and tribute to us is already paid. Six coin total. <laughs> I like that deal. Hmm. I'm not really concerned whether you like it or not. I think your time here for now is finished. Go back and talk to your remnant about completing this mission. Yes. I book it. Yes, uh, out of White Crown, walking along uh, the shoreline there in White Crown. Um, you're at back out, and, and, and a cold wind blows off of the ocean as you exit. Make sure to remove those six stress from your sheet. Very well done. Serious. Those Valkos dice, baby. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> All right. Who would like to go next? Uh, Juliet. I mean, I know what I want to do. Oh, gosh, I'm like, how much time do we have? There's what I, I want to... I would love to figure out a way to... You know, I'm looking at our layer, our crew sheet, the, and I'm looking at the covert drops. Mm. Um, one that's below this, that would, you know, if we got something like that, it'd give us plus two coin for espionage and sabotage jobs, yes. which I feel like are very much in our future. Yeah. I have um, I have a thought about that. You have a thought? I do. Okay. At one point when you were working with Selyak Khan, he told you that he was in touch with an organization called The Foundation. Oh, and shit. if you look on the Roll20, you'll okay. know that you have a plus two, I mean, sorry, a plus one, forgive me, a plus one with The Foundation. They are helpful. And at right. one point, they offered you a score, and in exchange, they would give you map of the underground yeah. passages around this Oh, ball. yeah. And the underground passages, these secret underground passages around Duskfall mm -hmm. would make a perfect system of covert drops. Covert drops. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that was the... Yes, so that job... Do, do we remember what that job was, or do I need to... It was breaking into I a think, mansion. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was, but I think you need to go and talk to to the foundation. Okay. I mean, Selyak was really the point. Yes. Yeah. He, yeah. For that. Selyak was the point. Man. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go sure to meetings these days. I'll, <laughs> I'll go look into that then. I'll, I'll go to the foundation. Um, you go to the Centralia club in six Central towers Rail. where the foundation is known to have little meetings. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, is it open to the public? Like, how do I, or is it going to uh, be Central like Rally a The Club type? is, it, it, it's, uh, let me put it this way. Maybe you have to do a little bit to kind of uh, get your way in. In, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, but uh, you, um, you definitely find your way in, I think. <clears throat> and this is a luxurious place. The, um, 
the enticement of this place is that it is a, a perfect like old boys club you know oh great they feed you a fine cuisine <laughs> they have uh, big liquor cabinets full of the finest duskval version of scotch uh which i think has a kind of a gray cloudy hue actually because it's not made <laughs> of the same things that earth scotch is made from uh and uh there are servants at your beck and call it is a very luxurious place and um when you ask about the foundation, uh, the uh, one of the uh, one of the servants, one of the um, v- various valets, uh, gives you a look like, "How dare you even ask about them?" I am here. Excuse me. Do you have membership here? <sighs> do I look like I have membership here? I'm here for a job that the Foundation requested of my crew. excuse me, ma'am. Please do not say the words the Foundation so loudly. I am here for the exquisite group of gentlemen that gather and speak of uh, philosophical aspirations for this great city. I was unaware that they had requested companionship tonight. Please follow me. I'm gonna kill this person. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I follow. Um, there is a bookshelf in one corner of the Centralia Club and um, he pulls a book out and it swings open. Wait here. I have the veil on just because I'm slightly weeping. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so- um, what, I didn't think about this, let's, let's do it. <laughs> he, uh, he comes <clears throat> back out and he goes, there's been some mistake. They have not requested the companionship of one such as yourself tonight. Please exit the club. I did not say that was why I was here, did I? I said I was here on behalf of a job that was requested. Here, here, Barnes. Let her in. Let Mm -hmm. her in. (laughs) I wish to see this saucy young woman. (gasps) Oh, God. (laughs) You enter and cigar smoke clouds the air. And you're looking at a lot of uh, older gentlemen. Um, They all look to be uh, nobles. They all look to be uh, well-dressed. They're all holding snifters and sipping from them. Uh, And there's a huge table around them. And you can see that uh, on the walls and on the table, there are old blueprints and uh, they're looking over very old archival scrolls and things like that. Hello there. <sighs> Hello, gentlemen. I I'm afraid my the other gentlemen here have grown quite dull. They all chuckle. <laughs> and you uh, could relieve us with a bit of um, uh, distraction from our studies. What's your name, young lady? <clears throat> you may call me Ophelia. Ophelia, are you all right? You seem to be. I'm fine. Something wrong? Just a bit stressed. You see, uh, I am here, not for what you may think, but because you have been acquainted with a uh, former mm, compatriot of mine, Celiac Khan. Their eyebrows raise and they all look at each other. Yes, yes, what has become of old Celiac? Haven't seen him around in a while. And then one of them says, which seeing him can be uh, quite scary, so we're happy to, uh, <laughs> that he hasn't shown his face. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, ha ha, he, yes, he looks very different, it's true. Um, <laughs> I uh, know that you approached him with a job, and that was something that <laughs> our crew was going to do for you all. Uh, 
Unfortunately. Ah, yes, a little bet we made. A little bet we made about Rowan House. Yes. Unfortunately, Mr. Khan is uh, indisposed at the moment. So, as the uh, point person for our crew, <clears throat> I am here to get the details. Yes, well, uh, I'm afraid that we resolved that little disagreement, didn't we, gentlemen? Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oof. So, I'm afraid we have no need of the services of a runner or errand person at present. Surely there is something else that you seek that we would be able to achieve for you, something requiring subtlety, espionage, <laughs> uh, the likes. He looks at his friends and one of them gives him one of them who has like a very pointed goatee and a very bald head and is wearing a monocle like gives him like a, a, a raised eyebrow and the, the head guy, the one that beckoned you in, a, a very broad man with a white beard um, steps forward and says, may I talk to you in private? Of course. My name is August. And August. you are, you said, uh, what was your name again? Ophelia. Ophelia, yes. <laughs> no doubt some sort of alias. Yes? Uh, maybe. Who could yes. say? Yes. <laughs> August. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Your group um, keeps uh, headquarters uh, in one of... Uh, Duskfall's many subterranean spaces, is that correct? Yes, it is. Well, uh, what if I told you that here in Six Towers, there's a series of tunnels, subterranean tunnels. My friends and I have an interest in having those tunnels uh, cleared. Oh, in... They are currently blocked by... Oh, not by rubble, no, uh, not by stone. Uh, we'd need a work crew for that. No, we need uh, people of uh, your business to handle this for us. I'm afraid that um, this rubble is alive. It's more of a rabble. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yes, there are people living down there, if you can believe that. And as mm. a as a human mole yourself, we thought that you might best be able to get them to vacate these tunnels. <clears throat> the promise I gave to Mr. Khan is, of course, uh, also uh, on the table. I can give you a complete map of this network. I think that this is a uh, most desirable offer, and uh, I will be back when the job is done. Very good, very good. You can find us here the same day every week. Yes, is there um, something I could say at the door that would make this process just a little, just the <laughs> slightest bit nicer to enter? Ha. <laughs> Vimes gave you trouble on the way in, did he? Ah, yes, Vimes, is that the <laughs> name? <laughs> <laughs> good chap, good chap. Just doing yes. his job, of course. Ah, yes, of course. Yes, next time you come, use the password. What is Paradigm. the password? Paradigm. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you so much, August. I August. <laughs> August. We, ne we never spoke. Of course. And he uh, returns to his friends uh, at the table. I wish we hadn't, and I will leave. Very good. Um, <clears throat> so you have uh, queued up. Uh, you guys have queued up two potential jobs right now. Mm -hmm. um, while we're on you, Juliette, would you like yes. to take another downtime activity? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. What did I want to write? Okay. 
Um, yes, I will. Perhaps when Valkos returns to the grotto at some point. Juliette is, um, like, in his room, waiting. Juliet. Hello, Valkos. Are you uh, alone? She sort of peeks around to see if Ekphelia is home at the moment or not. Ekphelia is busy. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of like look and I'm like um yes start unbuttoning my shirt <laughs> what uh, what are you what are you doing I, I, I want to touch Lee um talk to you I, I needed some help um oh but sorry I have severosi <laughs> tendencies to just C- sorry C- certainly no I, I will help you and um, maybe you can help me in return afterwards yes um, no please you first well I think it's uh, better that you are in top form actually to help me you are injured is that uh, what's wrong? yes and I kind of unbutton a bit more and on my chest you can just see bruises and elements of areas of, of you know, it looks horrid. Um, I would have given it to uh, Sawtooth, but I... I don't trust him. <laughs> That's fair. Um, what? When did, th- did this happen in the city? Yes. Um, I believe this is... This occurred when we were... Um, Going into, I think, the, the vaults. Yes. We were trying to break into the that bank. Remember? Uh, yes. It was a, a while back. I thought the wounds would heal by now, but obviously they oh. have not. Um, very well. Let me, um, just one moment, and sort of runs over to her and grabs some supplies and comes back. And she's done this before, but... She seems more nervous, more um, hesitant before she like actually sort of touches Valkos and sort of starts applying um, a balm or whatever, you know, some type of balm that will help with the bruising and help with the, relieve the pain. And, um, let me know if this hurts. I Hopefully this will help you so. Very good. Um, so, um, recovery is always a long-term project. Our healer, Juliet, rolls Tinker. Mm-hmm. And um, then you mark a number of segments on the healing clock. There are four segments on the healing clock. And um, only a critical will fill all four segments. Wow. And, and I get plus one die, right? For the healing treatment roll? Um. Yes, I think so. That's, I Wait, mean, it, it says everyone in the crew gets plus one die to the healing treatment rolls. What's, what's giving you that? The physiker ability. The physiker ability. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Um, that said... Okay. D- hmm. Hmm. Would trust in me also apply here? I guess it's oh. not... This isn't versus. Is a target... It says plus one die versus a target whom you have an intimate relationship with. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll give you that plus one die. If you role play, play right now, and we see how your relationship with Valkos becomes closer in some way. <clears throat> okay. Sure. Um, as she's sort of applying this, you know, Valkos, I I wish you would be a little more careful. I know this is in your nature to fight like this and to protect us, which I appreciate, but more and more I'm realizing I, I 
don't know what I would do if you weren't here. <laughs> if I didn't get to see you again. I, I don't want that to happen. Do you, do you understand? You missed a spot on the side of my chest. Oh, I'm s sorry. Here, let me, let me get that. And does that. Juliet, so. look. <clears throat> um, I, uh, thank you. Um, of course, yeah. As I said before, if it wasn't for you, I would be with Seliak and the Builder. I've made this clear. Yes, yes. I cannot deny my my feeling towards yes. You right, you you are you are very loyal to those you work with, I... Yes. Loyalty. Right. You can call it that. Let's call it that. Let's call it loyalty. Um, are you done? Uh, <clears throat> yes, just... Yes. Sorry. And you may roll. Okay. <laughs> They're so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, control? For... This kind of roll. You're what is flustered. This? Yeah, I know. You're I'm so like, is this, uh... <laughs> um, yes, you may roll your uh, you may roll your tinker, right? Control. And then okay. uh, I will give you the plus die okay. uh, for your physical ability and for your um Trust uh, in you, me. You, you trust in me, yeah. Okay. I'll allow it. And this is just standard effect because this is just a Okay. Yes, <clears> this <throat> is just a recovery roll, so it's like a long term project. Here we go. Oh my god. There's gosh. a six in there. Thank God I rolled a five dots. <laughs> yeah, so a six gives you three um, of the healing clocks uh, okay. segments filled. Okay. So okay. it just sounds like it's going to take a little while longer for well, Valkos. Right. I was actually going to spend my extra coin for this. So oh, to do it again? Be, okay, so yeah, I can could just. Could there be another roll there? Keep Is going. that possible to mm -hmm. spend a coin for a downtime activity? You yeah. can you can spend coin. I, I, yeah, I think so. You know, I, I've missed this a couple times. A couple times when you guys didn't get, quite get the result that you wanted, you can sometimes spend you could coin. Always, like when you oh, were forging those tickets that one time, right. or getting your hands mm -hmm. on those tickets. Instead of uh, resisting, you could have just spent coin. Oh, um, yeah. So maybe them. instead of a down an extra downtime, could you just improve the roll too? Spend that... one coin to improve the result to a critical. Oh shit! Oh. Okay. Can I do that? Oh. Yes, I think that ah. uh, you do do that <laughs> okay. if you'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, and I kind of, and as soon as like I, I can feel the bomb sort of like affecting, right? And I'm just like, I feel, you know, I feel great. And I sort of look at you and I sort of say, I know I said, um, or maybe I can come across as one who doesn't, say much and I know I may have commented on you for talking too much <laughs> but it's a beautiful quality you should never restrict yourself you have a way of words you're good at it and a mind to support it too Um. <clears throat> Suddenly, um, I feel like I'm not so great with words right now. Um, thank you. Thank you, Vanikos, for saying that. Um, I, Let's... Oh, go ahead. I was going to go into <laughs> what I actually want to do with my downtime. 
Mm, Very yeah, good. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Before sorry, you do, yeah, before on. you do, let me just yeah. remind Valkos that he loses the bruised condition from level uh, one, yes. and his okay. panicked condition goes down to level one. Okay, cool. Mm. Oh yeah, and in this moment, uh, because I think the way I'd intended these rings is they also show like the sort of emotional state, and I think like <laughs> the past week or however long we've been back from the city. Um, the stone has been like this um, cool blue sort of morose uh, uh, sort of feeling that's <clears throat> been reflected in the stone and it sort of is like shifting to this like warmer hue in this moment. Oh actually <clears throat> in this moment it is shining so bright that uh, <laughs> it's kind of shining out of your room. <laughs> wow like, okay. It's kind of lit up the <clears throat> room a little bit. Um <clears throat> um Look, and she gets close to Vax, sort of puts a hand on his chest and leans in, and she's also like looking behind him, um, making sure they're alone. I am. Um, I want to be prepared for whatever comes next. Um. I was hoping you could show me, uh a little better method to maybe defend myself. With I that, would... I then <laughs> swipe your hand down and move you to <laughs> down on the ground and I'm like, Oh my God. Well, first, always be prepared. <laughs> you want to train, right? I want to train in fact. You want to yeah. train, right? <laughs> Y'all train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She wants yeah. to train. train. <laughs> wow, I feel like the little like anime fan me is like, oh my god, I see this like training s- montage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, ooh, gosh, and it's like you know, uh, a little like, ooh, is that a little romantic or not, or like, it's what's not, going on? What's up with this <laughs> tension I that's love happening? It. Love it. Um, very, I love this. Okay, so um, you so guys I'd like get to train. You get bonuses to train in a certain. Yes. Um, in prowess, prowess specifically. In prowess, and that's what you're training in. So yes. um, uh, you, by training now with Valkos, will get two XP uh, in your prowess, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have to roll anything? or it just no, let's make, you get Let's two. make sure, but I think you I just think get you it. I think you do. Yeah, I think you just get it, yeah. When you spend time in training, mark one XP on the XP track for an attribute or playbook inva- advancement. If okay. you have the appropriate crew training upgrade, mark plus one XP, two total. Great. Fantastic. Then yes, we train. Hmm. Uh, very good. Um, and that covers uh, both of uh, your downtime activities for each of you. So right. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you yeah. with uh, Valkos uh, and Valkos is um, well in his uh, battle stance. Let's call it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, sparring. In quotation marks. <laughs> They're also actually training. They're training, can guys. We, can we just, they're, they're training. training. They're training. Yeah, you're really they, training. You're really two training. So awkward people that did not say anything explicitly. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Okay, and uh, we're going to go back into the night. Back. So yeah, let's into... go to that from that intimate scene of training <laughs> to someone who is palpably solitary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> someone yeah. who doesn't realize that not only does their former partner consider them dead their former partner has begun an intimate relationship with someone else okay. <laughs> oh, so God. oh no and i believe one of the traumas on this character sheet is obsessed oh, yes oh, yes <laughs> um and also, a just to review, I love it. Just to review, um, just to review, <clears throat> the uh, rival is uh, researching how to destroy you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aquilia, <laughs> what, did, what do you do with your time in the city? I think the the only wise choice, and probably the choice that they're compelled to make is to slake their thirst. 
um, because this trip to the Imperial City was so uh, innervating. They have to. They need. They need the stress uh, brought down. They need to feel the quickness of life inside them once more, and uh, sucking the final drafts from that dying girl was not enough. Um, it's just like, even like, see them back in that park, departing the scene with that poor, poor girl, knife plunged in her, in her bosom, with an eerie smile on her lips. Um, and, uh, um, I actually, one play that Ophelia has might be, might be to go to Juliet. As you exit the park, a cloud of blackness, you know, you, you, you never think about it anymore. It just kind of comes over you. So as you're exiting the park, yeah, suddenly uh, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it fills the air and darkens the sky above you, that the sky that's visible between mm-hmm. the trees. And you return to the grotto, which is not far from Miss Shore Park. And um, you find Valkos and Juliet sparring. And maybe I just watch this for a moment. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> um, Charm. Oh, uh, Ophelia. <clears throat> oh, no, I don't wish to interrupt. No, I, th- I think we were just finishing up. I'm just trying to stay yes, we were. <clears throat> on my toes, you know, after everything we encountered. Uh, it was uh, good. Uh, just before we finish, just keep your arms up. Um, ensure that the guard is tight. Um, yes. Right. Right. Um, thank, I will, thank you, um, No, it's fine. Um, Ophelia, uh, I kind of walk out of the grotto. So, of course, one must keep... One must keep that guard up. Well, you know, perhaps I wouldn't have fumbled that last job so badly if I could have been quicker or been stronger or... I... How are you, my dear? Now, I don't like to hear you talk about yourself. I'm I'm sure that whatever aid our friend is offering to you will only sharpen the instrument that is yourself. You always were a quicker study than me. I can tell that there's something still upsetting you. Oh? Oh. And what was the name of that porter at the foundation? V- v- Vimes. Vimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can. Has someone been rough with you today? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I, uh... Right, yes, before, um... Before I came back, I went by, um, the foundation. You remember, Celiac had a uh, relation with them, and there was a, a job they had offered that I think would be good for us to do, but... Hmm. A bit before God, my time, it? but I, uh... I remember around the guild, they used to speak of that, uh, dusty... Old boys club. Oh yes, it was vile, despicable. They're so up their own asses. It's like, I, you know, it was not an enjoyable time. But I do think it is a job that is worthwhile. I wouldn't mind, you know, blowing the place up once we're done with the job. But <laughs> mm. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um. Oh God, you know, Would they you- brought me in as if I was there. To pleasure them. As if I was some... Ugh, I, it didn't matter that I came in on official business. All they saw was this this woman there as some tool for them. 
We both know what that's like. Yeah. To be underestimated. To have your work claimed by another. Mm. I wonder yes. if I couldn't do you a favor. Oh? Perhaps if you were to arrange a follow-up meeting, I might be able to talk some sense into them. Uh, before we finish our work, I, I worry. Are you sure you can um, do so and, and, and retain our relationship with them? I'm positive that I can be extremely discreet. <clears throat> well, how about this? Uh, this is where they're located. And I'll say where they are. I forget exactly. The Centralia Club. They're at the Centralia Club. Uh, you need merely utter the password. Paradigm. Hmm. If I need to go that far, do you remember who who was it who caused you the oh, most distress? Vimes, that filthy little rat. Now that's all. Wait, that's all we need. What are you going to do, darling? What are you? Please, just. I just want to do you a service, darling. Okay. Just don't do anything we can't come back from, yes? Of yes. course. <laughs> and and she's even um, sort of touching Ophelia's arm like, Okay, well, um, be careful. I think she gives you a kiss on the cheek. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And now I'd like to cut to a scene um, at and the I'm, Centralia Club. And I'm wondering if this aid might be able to score me in a, a bonus die. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what 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 exact? Oh, so the fact that Juliet gave you information and the password. Yeah. Uh huh. No, no, there's no bonus die in um, <laughs> right, Charlie and Stress. No. no. Okay. That's not how it works. Um, it's, uh, but I'm trying to basically, like, I'm trying to get, um, I'm doing, I'm doing her a favor, but I'm also getting her to serve me someone. Um, so yeah, I want to, I want to ro roll up on the, this guy and uh, and feed. You spent some time in the club. Right. You were able to get in with the password easily, and just for color, just to see. Let's see how well you're able to fit in, blend in at the club. Right. I'm going to roll consort to see how I do that. Yes. Very good. And it's uh, controlled standard effect, and Ooh, you, do, you get a was, one that and was, a three. But that was a risky position, mate. Well, I, 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 I pounded through the, uh, <laughs> the toggles. I don't know how risky that was, but maybe it was risky. So we'll cut ahead. You don't fit in at all. You're clear. You clearly don't belong there. I mean, perhaps Ekaprag's accent gave you away. Mm -hmm. Regardless, you find yourselves manhandled by two security, beefy men in bowler hats, and they're holding you in a back kitchen, and Vimes is standing in front of you. Apparently, our password has been bandied about all over Six Towers. We'll need to have that changed. Make a note, dear. And he, uh, a woman standing nearby nods. I'm going to have to ask you to leave and never darken our door again. Can't blame a, can't blame a man for trying. See how the swells live, eh? Yes. Well, 
and it has been our privilege to see how the gutter rats live. Oof. The exit is right there. Fuck him up! Fuck him up! I'll mm. see you out. <laughs> oh, yes. The security roughly toss you out into the alley. Okay, as they do that, I'm going to try to... Uh, I, I mean, the whole point was to try to get him alone. <laughs> Would you like to wait until later and see if you can get yeah, him great. alone? great. I'll allow myself to be tossed out, and then I will wait. Hours pass. The bells ring a late hour. You watch various cooks and servants exit that back alley door. And then almost last, very late hours after that, he exits the club. And you hear someone say, good night, Mr. Vimes. Yes. He puts on a bowler hat himself and he clicks an umbrella along the cobbles as he moves through the alley. And someone has been waiting for him. As still as a statue. Someone who's used to waiting. Those eyes are glinting in the dark. And you may roll your hunt. With that added die. Oh, dear, please. Oh there we my are. Gosh. There it is. A six. a six. So yeah, he clicks along the cobblestone. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> Mr. Five. You again. I can call for security in a moment. They are still inside the club. Oh, please do, but not until I've shown you how the gutter rats live. I think you'll <clears> find <throat> that as desperation peaks, new vistas of pleasure open. And, um, he fumbles for something in his pocket. Um, my hand is already on his arm. I think you'll find there is such fun that one can have in the shadows of the gutter. And I lean in for a kiss. I take <laughs> from him. Oh, my gosh. Before he uh, gets the thing out of his pocket, you are drawing the breath out of his lungs. A whistle falls onto the cobbles and clinks and clatters there as you um, drain him of life force. Now, my question, of course, is how far do you go? I, th I mean, I, I take six. Again, this is not a... Uh... I'll, I think I'm going to actually leave him. But, uh... uh leave him yeah. alive, you mean. Leave him alive, that is. <laughs> but not before I <clears throat> rifle through his effects. Oh. Very good. Um, you, um... Shall you I? find a, a gold watch. Um, you find, um... A, sort of a, uh, a pen set. Uh, of things that, you know, you would use to, um sign and um, you know actually uh, a approve or put the stamp on official documents from the Centralia Club and uh, and a whistle that I think he was going to blow in order to summon security of course um, I take that seal um, and uh Maybe maybe you can see like back in Ekaprag's like study now looking much more alive, writing a letter to the Centralia Club and inserting the seal like um, tell your factotums to be more diligent in the protection of their items and in the service of their duty. One wouldn't f want important effects such as this falling into the wrong hands. I should hope that your man will be disciplined in the harshest possible terms. Yours, E dash. And I put that into the post <laughs> and I send it to the foundation. The, the messenger guild mm -hmm. delivers it diligently. <laughs> and now I would like to set a final scene. There are two jobs 
on the table. Mm -hmm. In fact, two of our scoundrels have promised to complete them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was going to (laughs) say. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, You know, um, things can be put on sort of a timeline. There can be a backlog of jobs. Hey, you're in the queue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I I mean, that's what I... Look, let's talk about it. Let's... I think our final scene should be here in the grotto, Mm -hmm. and we should decide which job to take. Just to remind our audience, the jobs are taking out the new Sparkrite facility in Coleridge, or removing some inhabitants of some underground tunnels in Six Towers for the Foundation. So I was thinking, if we do the tunnels first... Then you know, essentially, it allows us and also helps Use us to the find tunnels. Them. exactly. Yes, in order to kind of get some espionage and, and some some good crafty work in that space as well. Agreed. Yes, I think that that seems like the perfect one-two punch for our plans. <clears throat> well, would anybody like to gather information before you head into the score? Oh, yeah, oh, probably. yeah, absolutely. Um, we will need to know who exactly is in these tunnels. Um, if one of you could scout it out, perhaps. Yes, so who is going to gather the information? And I think we'll maybe end on a rumor about this upcoming job, something Ooh. that might be considered. But uh, that depends on the gather information role. So who's going to scout this out? I'll do it. Okay. Unless, unless... Yeah, well, no, I think you'd probably be better at finding information without beating someone into a pulp. <laughs> you can read fucking minds. So right, right. There, there, is, there is that. I think, uh, yeah, I will I'll, uh, I will hunt for information, and I think I'll do that by consort. Um, so I'll try to socialize maybe with some folks who, maybe um, if there are uh, um, civic workmen, um, people who work in infrastructure repair cleanup what are the rumors that they've heard about um about subterranean dwellers very good um you meet them in a tavern um you uh, are uh, sitting with a bunch of off-duty members of uh you know one of the, the uh, several different guilds who are drinking thick mushroom brew what did you say your name was again? Name's Icaprag Wody, old son. And whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? Marbury. John Tan Marbury. Yes, I've heard rumours that there's underneath Duskfall is honeycombed all the way down to the centre of the world, that it has no end. There's all sorts of strange characters lurking about in there. One would have thought it couldn't get any darker than it is on the surface. No, it goes deep, friend. goes quite deep. Me and the boys have been down there, seen some things. Oh, there's people down there. Yeah, there's people. Transients and the like, are they... Got their own little little society, hollow earth, like the old books used to say. Roll your consort. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Four. Okay, four. four. Okay. Funny you mention hollow. There's hollows down there. You know what a hollow is, lad? They'd have broad strokes. I've tucked myself away in many a many a space, but what do you mean? It's a body. What? It's a body that still moves, even though the spirit's been pulled out of it. Well, now There's a lot of them just... down there, shambling about. They're hungry, like beasts. They'll eat anything organic. (laughs) And they especially like things that are alive. (laughs) We stays away from them tunnels, don't we, lads? 
We don't go in there. No, no. But I had an encounter one time. And he lifts his hand. Oh, yes. I've seen me a hollow. He raises his hand and two fingers are missing off of it. I've even felt me a hollow. Down there in the dark. Well, you won't catch me down here, and that's a fact. Brimming with life as I am. <laughs> and that is where we will end today. That's Jesus so Christ. cool. Oh, We're going to go God. play a zombie game. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. This sounds so fun. Dusk of all of the dead. Yes. <laughs> Uh, when we return, we will have a Dusk Ball of the Dead scenario. The dead walk and the remnant <laughs> have to exterminate them. Uh, until then, I want to thank my amazing cast, Ross Bryant, Abu Salim, and Josephine McAdam. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to amazing. Dinesh and all of our viewers and listeners. We can't wait to play for you again. We'll be back in a week. Bye-bye.